Well, before we do our weekly walkabout, I want to show you something that is one of the true joys of this house, and that is the view outside of my kitchen window. It's kind of a palladium-like window, and I just love the view, but more importantly, I especially love the view this time of year because the redbud trees are turning golden, and I love the way the Boston ivy drips off of the trunks. Even in years like this one, where it's been very dry, very hot, and less than a stellar gardening year. But nevertheless, when things start to turn, when the leaves start fluttering down, I just love it. You can see berries in the distance and then the great form of the viburnum. So this is typically my view when I'm doing dishes or cooking. But now let me show you Hub's view from his chair. Well, pretend like I'm Hubs because this is his perch when he's sitting in front of the fire or watching me cook. And he just gazes out the French doors that look into the back. And I think it's equally as beautiful a view, just subtly different than mine because he can see the bistro more. But let me tell you, in the morning, I know what a successful job that I have done on creating this garden because I practically need a stick of dynamite to blast him out of that, uh, out of this chair and away from his view of the garden. And more importantly, I think watching all of the birds. Well, I was just telling Matt and Stuart that this kind of day where it's very blustery and there's lots of leaves come down reminds me of that, that one segment, remember you guys, of Winnie the Pooh, where he's walking around blowing a leaf and keeping it oh, yeah. in the air in the 100 <laughs> acre wood? Because it's that kind of day here. I just love watching the leaves come down because, you may not know it, but day after tomorrow, Stuart, we're getting our first freeze and I think maybe a little bit of rain tomorrow, <laughs> but I'm ready because now that it's getting cool or cold, I have my firewood. So I always replace my plant stand that has topiaries on it with my wood rack, which just makes it handy for me to go inside and light my fire in the fireplace. So I, like I say, I started to close down the garden a little bit early this year because of, well, just just life, but you can see that I am prepping for the first real hard freeze because we're not just going to kiss a freeze. I think that we're going to make a commitment to it on <laughs> Thursday. So I've got all of my topiaries. I'm getting ready to spray them with neem oil because there's still some white fly going on out here because we haven't had a hard freeze. So I'll either get some safer soap or some neem oil and I'm gonna spray them this afternoon. And then I'm deep watering some things I want to deep water with my giraffe hose reel. But look at this, this just, this just slays me. So how many tomatoes did I get this summer? Practically none. Oh yeah. But how many have I gotten this fall? Well, there's some at the end of summer, right? Like yeah, some towards the end yeah. of summer. But now look at all of these that are green that I'm, I'm going to take in. And I'll show you guys how we can ripen those inside. But I pulled out the remainder of all of those tomato plants that were looking pretty sad. But I did make sure to keep all of those green tomatoes. Maybe, do you guys know how to make, sli what is it, sliced green tomatoes? Fried green, Fried tomatoes. green tomatoes. That's, That's a southern thing. About, yes. I know. Um, and then, then I just always want to make sure that I stop to enjoy tiny, tiny little things as well as the broad landscape. And look here, I have an interesting little bloom that's getting ready to come out on this tiny little hosta. And this has not bloomed before, so I'm curious to see what it will look like. And it's going to bloom inside this little pot. So, fortunately, I always have my clippers with me. Always have clippers with you when you are doing a walkabout in your own garden. But look at all these leaves. Um, Stuart, I think we're gonna have to get out the works leaf shredder Ooh. because when I plant my pansies and everything in the front yard, I'm gonna mulch them with just leaf mulch. Now, look at this. Look at this. this was just a little cutting that I put in here that didn't do much this summer, but now it's really, now it's really taken off and is really happy while a, a few of these other things got sunburned. But nevertheless, this held its own pretty well. And those two boxwood in there will make sure that it kind of still keeps a winter presence going into the cold seasons. Pretty soon, I'm gonna be playing with all of my little fir trees that I have showed you guys before, but I wanna give you a, this reminder, now's the time. If you wanna go out into your own garden, 
or a friend's garden and dig up some little volunteers like these blue point junipers now is a good time to do it you can still leave them outside for a little bit to get them acclimated before maybe you bring them in little for christmas trees yeah for little for little christmas trees a little christmas display so these guys are pretty much finished and i will clip off oh wow they're not as pretty they're anymore. not as pretty they're done they lasted a while but I want, to show, I want to show you this. Well, let me show you two things. First of all, there's still a few blooms that if I wanted to bring these in and dry or spray paint or something for my Thanksgiving table or for a dried arrangement, I could still do that. Look at that color. It's really beautiful, I think. I can make a cute, sweet little tussy messy out of that. Be cool, so there, like speckles. And speckles. Gold. There's still time to do that. The other thing is, as the hydrangea, both the oak leaf and just your other types of hydrangeas, begin to turn. The foliage begins to turn. Look how beautiful that is. Looks metallic already. Yes, and look how pretty that looks together. So if you are getting ready to do a charcuterie board or something like that, and you want to use this on your charcuterie cool. board, isn't that cool? Really cool? Or to decorate your Thanksgiving table. The giant leaf. The giant leaf, and you can do that. And I just think it's just beautiful. It's got both, and look at that color echo right there. That is just, just lovely. And then you could even come here and cut one. Now see what a pretty arrangement this would make, and I didn't even plan it. That's one of the larger Tussie Mussies. Yes, and you could make, you know, this would just make a wonderful cut bouquet that you can bring in, put by your bedside table, put uh, by your guests' uh, night table if you are having overnight guests. Anyhow, it's just a pretty little Tussie Mussy, which is one of the reasons you always have your, your pruners or some scissors with you when you come out. You're now, such a good host. Uh, yes. Hostess. <laughs> Hostess. Hostess. So last week on the last walkabout, I talked about seedling identification. And some of you were asking me, number one, will I eventually do a video on seedling identification? And yes, I will, pointing out specific seedlings and what they look like. But the other thing is, so how do you know, um, or, or, or how, how do you kind of identify? Well, one of the ways you can identify them is by knowing what was there prior to the seedlings. So I knew that I had a great big clump of pale yellow columbine here so it is just logic that when it went to seed this is where it would go to seed and this is where the seedlings would be and if you look at a little tiny seedling let's see there's a little tiny one they're all big. It, they're all kind of big. Oop, they, over there. they look almost like clover. Oh, Here's kind of a little one. Okay. But no, Stuart, you are probably looking like at this cl- one. Those over there. Right? This one is actually a larkspur. And how do I know? I know that because I, just from experience. But these, <laughs> I think we'll find some seedlings on the other side. Oh, no, I just saw a mosquito fly by my head. Yeah, see, we need that hard free, Stuart. And look here. <laughs> look there. There's already some daffodils coming up. It needs to turn cold and quickly. So these, and if I wanted to dig some of these up and transplant them, I easily could. Um, Let me see over here. Here, Yeah, here's a tiny little one. Right there. That's a tiny little one. It's got kind of blue-green color. Don't look at my bad manicure. I'm getting a manicure this afternoon, as uh, in contrast to the larkspur. But again, just by practicing, as I often tell my husband, just by practicing a little common sense, you can uh, sometimes come up with the answer. Case in point, Stuart, I practice a little common sense, and I didn't need you to help me get the freezer drawer handle back on. Oh, you did it. I did it my big girl self. Yes. It thwarted hubs, but I was able to figure it out. Okay. So in here, I've got all different kinds of seedlings. Here's another little tiny, tiny columbine. Okay. Look at that one. It looks almost like blue green, like a clover. And there's more in here. In contrast to this right here, this one right here. That's Minoan lace. And again, I'll do a longer video on this later. 
but I know that because I have seen it germinate in the past. I recognized it and I know what it looks like. And one thing I know for sure is over here, I have tons of larkspur that has germinated over here. I think I must have had a bouquet of it or something that was here and some of the seed heads dried. So I've got lots of it over here. If I don't want it here, because every plant that's in a place you don't want it is a weed, I could easily just pour boiling water on this or spray it with some vinegar and, or even just slough it with my foot and it would be fine. Now here are some other elements. If I wanted to really get that last vestige Ooh. of an arrangement wouldn't this be wonderful Stuart? lots of color yes lots of color i mean One see just favorites. by walking around in your garden matt are you impressed yeah what is that coleus yeah this is yeah this is just coleus Beautiful. but if if you wanted to to put together for your neighbor or for anyone yeah that's my favorite just a last you know oh, just a last that. minute bouquet look how pretty yes. that look it looks because most of the fall colors kind of go pretty well together. It's that easy, y'all. It's that easy. <laughs> so much color. <laughs> so much color. And the thing is, you can cut, you know, not only from the garden, but you can cut from your containers too. Okay, have fun. What's that one? This is. Oh, that's my favorite. This is a kind of celosia. Two of my favorites. And a lot of this will go to seed. So you can see some of it here is starting to go to seed. And I will save some of it and I will scatter it around where I want it to go. It looks like when you crumble. Well, it's not completely dry yet, uh, so it's not really crumbling well. But sure it's, almost, it's almost to the curl. But, but see what I mean? How just by walking around, you can, in the forest or the wooded property near you, look at just how beautiful that is. Um, and obviously get permission if you want to do that. No, and you can do, there. yeah, you could do temporary little ones like that. I could elevate that and then put more foliage in there that's pretty. But just see how easy it is to compose something. I have no magic. I have no magical powers. I just have sharp pruners. <laughs> um, and, but I think that's really pretty, don't you, Stuart? Very much so. Very much so. Um, now, Back here, I've got some evergreens, like this Blue Point Juniper again, that started out. Stuart, I'm going to back up for just a minute because I want to show all of you something that I forgot to show you before, if I can find it again. Okay, look over here. So when I talk about digging up little trees to make little Christmas trees like those, I've showed this many times before. Oh, you got one. But look here, here's one right here. Now I could either dig this up and create a little tree. I could leave it in place and start a topiary or just a natural sized, natural shaped blue point juniper. But look over here, what I've also got. I just want to see little tiny Christmas lights. On little tiny. <laughs> Little, little tiny, tiny fairy lights. The little tiny presents yes, around just for, it. For, the little, for the little fairies <laughs> in the garden. And look over here, here's a little tiny, tiny redbud tree. Oh. So those are the things that are fun to look for. But now let's kind of, let's start to kind of wrap up this little tour with what I started to say, but I digressed. <laughs> and that is that some of your evergreens and this blue point juniper, when it started out, Matt, when this one started out, it was the size of that one. How long did it take to grow that big? Uh, this, well, probably the first three or four years, I just let it grow, grow in kind of a Christmas tree shape. And it was just a conical shrub. Let me get on this side. It was just a conical shrub. <laughs> but then I noticed that it could be transformed into this shape. So I did, and that was probably, once I saw that, it happened almost immediately. So this is probably six years old. It's Ooh. not that long. No, Yeah, to no. reiterate that, little guy over there turned into this. That's not that long at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but some of my evergreens are overgrown and they need to be clipped. But I'm not going to clip them now. Why? Because even tiny bits like this, talk about, this is a, this is a, we need to put one of the light bulbs up, Stuart, for these little tips. Okay. 
because here's a little tip. These, I'm really not going to do a whole lot of pruning on these. Why? Because I want even the tiny little snippets like this to be pressed into use for holiday decorating. So I could put these on a package. I can make miniature for our, for our little tiny dollhouse. We could make a little evergreen spray and put some berries on it. But even little tiny pieces of evergreens, much less really long branches of evergreens, I'm going to wait till it gets a little bit closer to Christmas to do some of my pruning because I want to use those prunings in my holiday decor. Um, same thing like these here. This will go to seed. But some of this I am leaving not only for, yesterday I was out here and there were so many butterflies. So I'm leaving these not only for the pollinators that are still enjoying the remnants of these. And what is it? Uh, this is some of the, the uh, Veronica that I had, that pale lavender oh, Veronica yeah, yeah. that goes to seed. But if I wanted to use this in some kind of tablescape or in some kind of arrangement, I could use it in a dried form or I could spray paint it yeah. <laughs> because I will spray paint anything that moves. It's important for you to know that, Matt, as you join this team. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just another, another option. Oh, wow. Yeah, this iris. And, that stands oh, out yes, a little bit, and you know it? what? This is one of the ever blooming, the repeat blooming iris from Brex that we planted a number of years ago. And it was just a tiny little corm, and now, and it's bloomed three times this wow. fall. Wow! So it's, it's so standard. it really yes, it really really performs. I want to show them the Chinese just because. Just because you love I, it I, so much. I found much. those photos, and I'm going to put one up to remind them what it looks like when it's in bloom. Yeah, this is for those of you of you that are new to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button um, and share with others who might also enjoy it. But this started out as an $11 shrub from Lowe's. And then lastly, I won't go into the potager too much because I'm really putting it to bed. But I pulled out the last of the tomatoes. And Stuart, I have to show one thing. You can see I've been sweeping, taking the pots out. And a lot of these pots here... I'll take out what's dead inside them and then I will fill these up with flower bulbs. But look here, I before it got really hot I thought okay I'm going to try again to plant some okra oh. late season and look how sad, but I got one. Even the one is beautiful. It, it is and 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 well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't okra. have said that, but look at that. No, it's all right. We even got one. You wanted more than one. Yes. A red <laughs> cow horn okra, but look at the sweet little Oh, there's little two. Flat. I didn't see yeah. the other one. Yeah, there's two. I didn't even see that one. So this could be part of our floral arrangement up no, front. absolutely. What do you think? And then and there's then lots of seedlings in here. Some will stay, some will go. That would look really good with speckled gold on it. It would, but you know what? Before we depart, everyone, let's add it to our little arrangement. Uh -oh. Our little walkabout arrangement. Our walkabout tussie. And then, Stuart, you need to get to sweeping and cleaning up. I need to do what? You need to get to sweeping oh, and cleaning sweeping. up. Oh, sweeping. Oh, there we go. Because it's always wonderful to use non-traditional things in an arrangement. So, look here. And we planned none of this, did we? No before we came out here to just start walking around. But wouldn't that just be absolutely gorgeous? Where else are you gonna Anyways. find an arrangement like that? That's uh, true. Yeah, nowhere. In, in Linda Vodder. That's right. Linda Vodder. Yeah, Only yeah. Only here. <laughs> yeah, living the Linda Vodder life, Love right it. right here. But what's most important is you guys can do it too, just by walking around with your clippers and finding beauty everywhere you look. You guys have a good Wednesday. Well, if you've held on this long, here is a very blustery outfit of the day from top to bottom. These earrings, where did I get these? Oh, I think I got these at Remington Coat Factory. It looks like a, a gummy candy. I know, it kind of does. They always make me feel like a little kid. Um, do you like my, my okra boutonniere? I love it. Or my okra 
corsage, I, I should it. say. Uh, very befitting of a farmer, a gardening gal that's in overalls. And by the way, you guys, of anything, any link I have ever posted, this is the most popular link. More people have bought these overalls because you guys must love them as much as I do. So as you're thinking about Christmas gifts for daughter-in-laws or son-in-laws or anybody really, it's the beauty uh, of overalls. yeah, the, these are great and I love them and they're just tray tray comfortable. My t-shirt came from, it's just a graphic tee I got at Old Navy and you guys have seen these form footwear sandals that I like. It's still warm enough out to, like Birkenstocks, yes, the yes, there but without the price and they come in all <laughs> sorts of colors and I've got them in multiple colors and I just, um, you know, they're just easy to run through the washing machine or whatever when they get dirty. So have I forgotten anything? Uh, I'm looking around, not seeing anything. Okay, so, and I, and I, and you have to grow your own. You yeah. do have to grow your own yeah. okra. Yeah, I can't provide you a link on that. You have to grow your own. Go do it. Red horn okra. There you go, you guys.